What is proprioception neuromuscular facilitation? What do these exercises even do and accomplish anyway? Should you be doing them? Let's find out. Welcome, or welcome back to the Prehab Channel, where we teach you how to take control of your health. My name is Dr. Craig Lindell, and today we're talking about proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, aka PNF. So first we're gonna begin with what is the theory and the purpose behind PNF, and then we're gonna follow that up with the instructions and the applications of PNF, how to do it with your patients and clients, or how to incorporate the concepts with exercises. But first, let's begin with the definition of what PNF is. In simple terms, it is a method of mobility and flexibility training that targets contracting and stretching various muscle groups and joints. There are specific instructions to keep in mind according to PNF researchers, but we will dive into that in the next chapter. Before we get into the instruction and the application of PNF, I wanna make it very clear because it's been confusing in the industry, PNF is not a specific exercise. PNF is a concept. It is a technique that you can apply to any exercise or movement. But too often and too frequently, PNF gets associated with a specific exercise or a movement, and that is not the case. So make sure that you remember that because now you can go into any movement or any exercise and apply PNF concepts or techniques, but just know that it is not one exercise. All right, so we're gonna get into a few different things. First, we're gonna start with PNF stretching concepts. I'm gonna show you two different super common concepts, how to do them, why they're important and what they accomplish. And then I'm gonna follow that up with facilitation patterning concepts. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first PNF stretching concept that we're gonna show is the contract relax method, also referred to as the hold relax. You've probably seen this a lot with the hamstrings demonstrated. So with a partner, you're gonna have them lay flat on their back and then you're actually gonna straighten out both legs. And we're gonna be focused on stretching the targeted muscle, which is the hamstrings on this side. So with the person in this position, I'm gonna be focused on, hey, I don't want their body moving. Their pelvic position needs to stay in the same place. Their right leg needs to stay in the same place. As long as their body is staying in the same place as we're performing the stretching technique, then we can feel comfortable that we're working through the hamstrings, if the rest of her body starts moving, pelvis, low back, then we know that, okay, we gotta cut it, we've worked through the full range. So what you're going to do is, you're gonna grab the leg closest to you, I'm going to get that on my shoulder, and now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be trying to stretch the hamstrings, and I'm going to let Adele here know, hey, you gotta let me know when you feel a stretch in your hamstrings. And I'm just gonna take my time, I'm seeing if the rest of her body is moving, let me know when you feel a stretch. Perfect, so she feels a stretch. So now I'm gonna say, hey, let me know when that stretching sensation subsides. Anywhere from at least four to six seconds is what's recommended by research, but it may take longer, it may take less. So hanging out here, and then when she says that that stretch subsides, now I'm going to tell her, hey, Adele, I want you to try to bend your knee, push into my shoulder as hard as you can without moving the rest of your body. Go ahead. So she's gonna push and I'm gonna say, hey, we gotta do that for the same amount of time. So I want you to do that for at least five seconds. Push three, two, one, go ahead and relax. And now I'm going to move her into a bigger stretch and she's going to let me know, hey, that's when I feel that stretch again. So let me know when. She's smiling, she feels a good stretch. So we're gonna hang out here. And now we're going to repeat that process until I get through her maximal end range of hamstring flexibility. And this technique, contract, relax, also referred to as hold, relax, is achieving autogenic inhibition and stress relaxation. Okay, for the second concept that I'm gonna show you is gonna be called the contract, relax, antagonist, contract, also referred to as hold, relax, contract. So it's the same setup. Adele's gonna be laying flat on her back, legs initially are straight, and then I'm going to bring her leg up. We're going to stretch the hamstrings. She's gonna let me know when she feels that stretch. We're gonna hold that for at least four to six seconds. And then I'm gonna say, Adele, now I want you to push into my shoulder as hard as you can. She's pushing, she's contracting her hamstrings, the agonist muscle. Now you're gonna go ahead and relax. And now from here, 
I can go ahead and take her into a further stretch when she feels that stretch. Again, we'll hang out here five to six seconds. But now, instead of contracting the agonist, I'm going to say, hey, Adele, I want you to actually try to straighten your knee as far as you can. Flex your quads to stretch those hamstrings. She's going to hold that for at least five to six seconds. Again, all the time frames match one another, whether it's the passive stretch or the active stretching, go ahead and relax. And then what we would do is we would just repeat that process. In my opinion, doing one contraction of the hamstrings followed by one contraction of the quads, and then you can repeat that, or honestly, I would just contract the hamstrings once and then go into progressively passive stretch, flex the quads, passive stretch, flex the quads. So the first concept that we're gonna review when it comes to PNF facilitation patterns is going to be rhythmic stabilization. So this is utilizing alternating isometrics, trying to maintain a position where you're not allowing any motion. What we're going to demonstrate today is just rhythmic stabilization with the shoulder. So Adele, go ahead and make a fist and punch towards the ceiling. This is honestly one of my favorite techniques to use when someone is recovering from an injury or a surgery, or you're working on joint proprioception and stabilization. You can do it for any joint, but the shoulder is super popular. And now what I'm going to tell Adele to do is, hey, don't let your body move at all, especially your shoulder. I'm going to try to move your arm, but I don't want you to let me win. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply different directions of forces. This is what we mean by alternating isometrics. And the closer my hand is towards her hand, the harder it's going to be on her shoulder. If she's moving too much, then I can move my hand down here, and then I can apply slow to stronger force. I can go fast. I mean, you can have a ton of fun with this, and you can even add pressing down and doing the same thing. You can get very creative with this and you can do this for any joint in the body. So the next PNF facilitation pattern concept that we're going to show today is slow reversals. We'll demonstrate with the shoulder again. So Adele, go ahead and make a fist, punch towards the ceiling. Slow reversals is targeting the agonist muscle followed by the antagonist muscle. And you can do it in any plane of motion that you prefer. Uh, you can do it as slow, as fast as you want. A very common and popular pattern to work on facilitating is D2 and D1 flexion. I'm going to demonstrate D2 flexion where Adele is going to move into this D2 pattern of flexion followed by extension. And what I'm going to tell Adele is, hey, we're going to move your arm in this direction, in this motion, and depending on my hand placement is what muscles are going to get targeted. So Adele, I want you to push against my hand. Perfect. And now resist, go, 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 go. And then switch. So I'm switching my hands. We're now go. Right now you can say the agonist, the shoulder flexors, and then now the antagonist, the shoulder extensors. There's of course more muscles happening here because we're doing a complex 3D motion but we could do shoulder flexion and shoulder extension. We could say, hey, the deltoids versus the lats. You can get as creative as you want. I can even be pushing here and Adele, we're still gonna go in that direction. Let me win, but resist me. And now her muscles are working eccentrically versus before they were working concentrically. So slow reversals, an awesome technique to use with anyone recovering from an injury or a surgery. Now, what if you want to incorporate PNF concepts and techniques into exercises that you can perform on your own, or you want to give exercises to your patients and clients for them to do independently? Well, let's take advantage of the concepts that I showed earlier in this video, and I'll show you a hamstring example as well as a shoulder example. The first example is going to be the hamstring exercise. So think of that second concept, the contract, relax, antagonist contract, I'm going to demonstrate that with hamstring extenders. This is one of our favorite exercises in our hamstring program and that we give to our patients and clients all the time from our exercise library. You'll lay flat on your back, similar in the position that Adele was in, but now what you're going to do is you're gonna bring your knee as close as you can towards your chest, and then you're going to strain your knee as far as you can, flexing your quad. We're trying to get autogenic inhibition, and we're trying to get actually um, reciprocal inhibition of the hamstrings. I'm sorry, reciprocal inhibition of the hamstrings by flexing our quads. So 
keeping my abs contracted, keeping my low back flat, keeping my legs straight. I'm going to flex my quad, work through my hamstring length, and I'm just going to repeat this. So this is a great way to incorporate PNF concepts on your own for the hamstring. Now the next exercise I can show you just with a simple band. So we did that D2 flexion and extension. Well, I can just focus purely on D2 flexion, concentrically and eccentrically. So set up with a band doing a diagonal pull apart, I can just anchor the bands with my right hand where I'm basically in that position down here with my other arm. And then I'm going to go all the way up concentrically going into D2 flexion and now eccentrically controlling it. So the agonists are the muscles that pull my arm up into this position. And now the antagonists are working. No, the same muscle agonist is actually working eccentrically. So of course you can mix it up. You can do different movements if you want to hit the agonist antagonist, right? But this is purely agonist concentrically and then eccentrically. There's so many ways that you can incorporate these concepts and these techniques with exercises or hands-on with patients and clients. If you're looking for more ideas, check out our exercise library. We got thousands of videos and you can just search PNF concepts and you'll get a ton of videos populated for you. And just know that we literally incorporate PNF in almost every single one of our prehab programs. Okay, so let's recap. We learned a lot today in regards to what is the theory and the purpose of PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. What are the stretching concepts versus the facilitation patterning concepts? More importantly, what are some exercises that you can do on your own, as well as you can share with your patients, clients, whoever it may be. But let's hit home, what are the benefits of PNF? So they are likely short-term, and just know that the jury is still out there. Some articles support these findings, some articles actually go against them, and really the mechanisms, there's still a lot to be understood. But we can cite some research to say, hey, if you do PNF, you can experience an increase in range of motion and neuromuscular efficiency. We can see an increase in muscle strength and muscle power, as well as we can see an increase in athletic performance. Some of these benefits like range of motion are going to be short term, right? If you sit down, you're not doing much, you're sedentary, you'll probably lose that range of motion that you just worked on. However, if you work on PNF diligently, you're doing it two times a week, separate days of training, then great. You can actually probably get some of these long-term adaptations that you're looking for. But definitely avoid these mistakes. It's probably not ideal to do PNF within 90 minutes of a really hardcore workout or a performance like a game or something, especially if you're doing the contract, relax, or any of the stretching concepts where you're holding something statically, it's being done passively and relaxing, you're literally ramping down your nervous system. So any of the other concepts like rhythmic stabilization or slow reversals would be good, but any of the passive stretching, I would recommend avoiding it within 90 minutes of something. Make sure you're doing it on separate days of training. It's not part of your lifting, your power routine. It would be doing it as like active mobility recovery days. And then be mindful of frequency and contraction times. So research, researchers suggest, hey, you got to hold that stretch and you got to hold that contraction for at least four to six times, repeat it so many times, and then you will be on your way. Again, thanks for tuning in. Drop comments, give this video a thumbs up. Let us know what you want to learn more about and definitely check out our exercise library and our prehab programs if you want to learn more PNF exercises. Hey, did you like this video? If you did, you should definitely check out the Prehab app. It includes all of our programs, a brand new workout library, and tons more videos like the one you saw today. Check it out by clicking on this link and get a free trial. Take control of your health today.